152, we are going to take a look at uh, the second part of section 1.1. Just start about thinking about um, finding these areas. And notice it says by computing the left uh, Riemann sums, L8. We'll get to that vocabulary, um, this unit, this section. Um, so let me go ahead and start with just thinking about what we know about L8. So what that means is we're going to split this into eight sections, and then we're going to add them all together, and we're doing left. So notice it goes from 0 to 8, from 0 to 8. So 8 minus 0 divided by 8. I know that you, you probably know what this is going to be, but I just want to be a little official from 8 to 0 divided by 8 is 1. So each of these bases is going to be 1. So each of these is one long. And it's left sides. So there's a, tri a rectangle. There's a rectangle. And these are really nice values because all these heights looks like all these heights look like they are whole numbers. And remember it's left because I'm choosing the left hand side for the, each of these heights. So each of these is one. Uh, this is a height of one. Uh, one times one plus two times one plus three times one, plus four times one. This is this one, this one, this one, this one. This one here has a height of five. This one has a height of four again, uh, three and then two. And then I could add all those together. They're all times one, right? So it's basically five. So it's basically five, 15, 20, uh, 25, Oh, 25, 29, and that would be my approximation. So here's what I want you to notice that we did here. We had, we figured out this, this change of one, this distance of one. So that is our change in X, right? That's our, that's our intervals. So notice that's a change in X, and that's one each time. And then what we did is we picked each of these to make rectangles with. Notice that's basically, if this was a function, this is f of zero, the height of that function at zero. This is f of one, the height of that at one. This is f of two, the height of that is two. So basically we have these x, this x, and these values. So what we did was we summed up these x values, uh, these outputs times that change in x. Right, so basically we just want x of i, but notice it was the left-hand side, so we actually started at zero. So it was like that. So we did a bunch of f values, a bunch of heights, times x's, and we did it how many times we had these widths going on. Okay, so that's gonna help us think about how we could generalize this a little bit. And we're gonna get into this idea of these sums. So I have some interval a to b, I have some function. And what I want to do is calculate this area underneath it here. So in calculating that area, I'm going to do like it relative to some n. I could have a left n or I could have a right n. And so first off, to get my partition, my change in x, I'm going to say how long is this interval from b to a, and the one before it was 8, and divide it by n. That is my change in x. That's these widths right here. So if I think about this in this way, I have these little changes in X. And then um, depending on if I'm left or right hand side, I'm gonna get the height of the rectangles off of a bunch of these change in X, change in X. Now that change in X, that's that width, that's the, the width of the base of the rectangle. And then I have these values in here, these x values. It's basically like x sub 0, x sub 1, x sub 2, and so on. And they, they keep going on up to the last one being um, x sub n. So if I am doing a left-hand side approximation, I'm adding up a whole bunch of rectangles, n of them right, because that's how many partitions I've made. And now if it's the left side, I'm going to start here. I'm going to start uh, at basically this x sub 0. 
which is which is a. So I'm going to say x of i minus one because if I said x sub one, I'd be using that x to find the height that said x sub zero, and that's times um, the width. And now if I'm doing a right hand side approximation, I'm using these ones, the ones on the right. So it would be x sub i times that change in x. And knowing that uh, my change in x comes from that interval um, over, you know, like that interval over n right there. And these are really good to hold on to. These are Riemann sums. Riemann is mathematician and these sums are named after Riemann. Riemann gets credit for them because I think that uh, Riemann came up with them. Uh, I'm going to throw a function up here. There it is. And I will tell you that this function is uh, x minus 1 cubed, that quantity cubed. And we're going to concern ourselves with the interval 0 to 2. From here to here. So let's calculate. L4, and let's calculate R4. So first off, my change in X is going to be this distance cut into four pieces, right? So it'll be 2 minus 0 divided by 4, 1 half. So these bases are going to be 1 half. And then since it's the left-hand side, what I want to do is I want to do the sum from 1 to 4 of whatever the function is at those values, right? Because I want to start on the left-hand side. When an i is 1, I'm at the first iteration, so the 0th, times my change in x. Well, I know my change in x is 1 half. So um, this would be my setup for L4. And then, uh, let's see, change in x is 1 half. So it's going to be 1 half times these. Now I could list them all out. I could also like pull this one half out, and since it's a constant, and I could say that you can calculate it either way. And so two, three, four. So I've got x one, x two, x three, x sub four. So x sub zero is zero. Notice that any x um, x i is going to be the one that came before it plus the change in x. Does that make sense? I mean, that's so. If this, if, if this is this, the first one is uh, one half. The second one plus one half again would be one. The third one would be one and a half or three halves. And then the last one. Oh, I don't need the last one because I've got four of them. So basically. What I'm going to have is uh, f of 0 times a half plus f of a half times a half plus f of 1 times a half plus f of 3 halves. Right? Because f of 0 times 1, oops, sorry, is this triangle right, or this rectangle right here x sub 1 is at 1 half. This is a value of 1 half for x. So it would be this one right here. This next one would be this one. And the last one would be this one. You can tell that's going to underestimate. So if I plug all those in, get all those into my calculator, if I think about doing R4 on this, right hand, same basic idea in the sense that my change in x, my base, since it's 4, it's the same, right? Like, that's a distance of 2 divided by 4. So my change in x is 1 half. But since it's the right-hand side, my first height happens here at x1. Then my next one's at x2, my next one's at x3, my last one's at x4. And you can tell that this one is probably going to overestimate it. So if I set this one up, it would be the sum from 1 to 4 of these xi values, because I want x sub 1, x sub 2 times change in x. In this case, x is 1 half again. I'm sorry, change in x is 1 half still. So these 1 halves would all change. But instead of this being um, 
0, 1 half, 1, 3 halves. This is going to start at a half. This one would be a 1 because it's going to go up by those heights. How you calculate them are going to go up by a half each time. And then I do all those. I uh, shove those into my calculator, and I get, what, 8.5? Great. So if this one underestimates it and this one overestimates it, my actual value should be somewhere between the two of them. So as I start to um, dig into this a little bit more, I could do these again. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do these by hands. Like I could go L8, R8, and um, instead of four rectangles, it would be eight, right? So this would be. Might help me if I zoomed in to this a little bit because I'm going to need more space. If I do it into eight of them, like I'm going to have all those intervals in there. And I can still figure out my change in x pretty easily. Uh, my change in x is that the length of that interval divided by how many partitions I want to do. So 2 minus 0, that's a length of 2 divided by 8. So my, in, my change in x will be 1 fourth. My left-hand side would be my sum from 1 to 8, because there's 8 partitions. Of I'm plugging in, it's the left-hand side, so I'm going to shift it 1 to the left. And no change of x is, is 1 4. Uh, and if I do my right hand one, it's going to be the same idea 1 to 8, except I'm using the right hand side instead of the left hand side to start with. And it's also times change in x. And just, just to remember, uh, this f of xi, if, if this is my xi, that's this height, and it's getting multiplied by my change in x with that's width, right? So it's like this width times that height, that's give me a bunch of rectangles, in the areas of those rectangles. And so if I crank that one out um, in my calculator, these values, I'm gonna look them up, uh, 7.75, I think, R8 would be eight. And notice that bound between the left and the right gets closer, right? So I get like a better approximation. Um, and just, just so you know, if I did L32 and R32, that would be 32 partitions in here. A lot. Notice my change in X would be 2 over 32, 1 16th. So I'd have uh, 32 of them. I'd do a bunch of times, but just so we know those values, uh, 7.9375, zero six two five. And it feels like they're um, squeezing in on eight. So um, this leads me to think about um, a couple things about that area. One of them is I've been doing left sides and right sides, um, but really I could kind of do it anywhere on it. Like like where I estimate it. How about instead of saying um, always like x i minus one or x i. However, I make my rectangles, like let's say I wanted to make it here, not, but just somewhere between those intervals, that would just be a different value. But as long as, as long as I, you know, choose these, I might get even a better approximation, but it doesn't matter because it's an approximation. So I think that what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shift these a little bit, and I'm going to say that this is some point in the interval between xi and x of i minus one. So I'll just call it x i star, and that isn't my notation, that's just how we do it. So somewhere in here, including those endpoints, is that. So I'm gonna get that height somewhere in that interval. And I think that if I make this partition big enough, that becomes less and less important, right? I mean, the number of partitions, if I make the number of partitions big enough, that's going to become less and less important. So I'm going to say the area is about that sum from one to the number of partitions I want to do of those heights at some, you know, something that's in there multiplied by those widths. This is our Riemann sum. Change in x is the width of this subinterval. And then um, x 
star i is somewhere in that interval as well that height that that x value that gives you the height sorry that's a one um the height at some number in this interval times the width of that interval i will give you those rectangles approximations and as i let n uh actually and and if it could be too high right this estimate could be too high and we'll say that's uh an upper upper error or an upper bound and um we could have it's uh, a lesser one two or a lower one a lower bound and if it's too low and one way i can think about that happening is like if it's increasing my left is going to be too low and my right is going to be too high and if the function is decreasing my left is going to be too high and my right is going to be uh too low so the function will do both right so really i can only be certain about it without doing additional tests if it's um the other thing i know is that as n gets bigger and bigger this thing gets more and more accurate like n of 32 those triangle those rectangles get so tiny that it's really super close to it it doesn't have the massive overlap for when n's a smaller number you know the big gaps of error in there so if i think about that as n gets uh as n gets bigger this gets better and better that makes me think about this if i let n get massively huge and then keep growing from there. I'm gonna say the limit as n approaches infinity of that run of the heights of the triangles multiplied by the, uh, sorry, rectangles multiplied the widths of the rectangles. The limit as n approaches infinity, that will actually equal the area. As n approaches infinity, this thing gets closer and closer to the actual area that's underneath that curve. It gets more and more accurate. Uh, if you go crazy and say, fine, I'll just do it for an infinite number of rectangles where this width is infinitely small, then you'll have it exactly. Interesting. So I'm going to add some things to here. If uh, the function is continuous on that interval and this is the Riemann sum, then the area equals that. Yeah, kind of interesting. So we are going to build on that idea a little bit later. That's kind of the, the big idea. There's some tools we can use uh, to help us think about these. So let's say I wanted to find uh, L100 and R100 for uh, this function. On this interval negative one to one now it's going to be a little bit um, of a bear to do that by hand that's like a hundred rectangles but let's let's set this up what this would look like um my change in x would be one minus negative one over 100 so 1 50th and my left hand side would be uh, my sum from one to 100 of the function i'll just call it f of x times remember it's, it's delta x right um so it'd be 150th this would be a 150th and for the left hand side it's it's my function at that so it would be like so i would start with zero because if i is one it's this sub zero and remember that then x sub zero is my first one is negative one and then each of my subsequent ones will increase by that right each i -th term is the one that came before it plus the change in x so my left one would look like that my right one would look almost the same it would just be x of i so doing these by hand is going to be awful so, uh go to google <laughs> and look up a Riemann sum calculator. So just Google it. I like this one. I mean, that first one's just fine. You can just find one that works. And what's cool is, well, let's see. What's our function? 
and I have it written down here, so I don't need to flip back. X squared uh, minus X plus three. My lower limit is negative one. My upper limit is one. The number of uh, subintervals is 100, and I want the left sum, so calculate it for me. It'll show me a bunch of work if I want it to. Do, 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 do. And notice that my answer is about 6.6868. I'm just going to jot that down. I'll come back and, and write it down on the main page in a second. And then I'm going to do the same thing, but for the right hand side. Bunch of work. 6.6468. Man. That is close. Like it, it's really, um, it really looks like it's converging. So um, those are pretty close to each other. So the left hand side would be uh, 6.6868. The right hand side would be 6.6468. So it's 6.6 6 something, you know, 6.67 6 or something like that. You could make those bigger if you wanted to get them to converge. But anyways, if you if you get asked to do something with a really big N, um, and you're not asked to show the work for it, use use a uh, use a machine to do that work for you. All right, check out the problems that I want you to practice, and um, post any questions that you have, please.